welcome to this edition of San Diego People. This weekend we are talking about the history of skateboarding in San Diego and we couldn't do that of course without talking to none other than Tony Hawk. So we have the pleasure of uh, being in your, is, would you call this an office Tony? This is my office, uh, but we are <laughs> literally in my ramp right now. In so, your ramp, yeah. okay well that's a good place to be. So let's it's talk. It's my happy place. It, it is your happy yeah. place. I can imagine that. Um, let's talk about really what has become such a, a rich part of, I think, not only San Diego's culture, but California's culture, and that is skateboarding, because it has a unique history here in San Diego. What got you started at a young age? Really, it was my brother. Uh, we grew up in Tierra Santa, and he was a surfer, and he started skating in the late 70s when it was sort of the fad, uh, the Dogtown Z Boys era and I started doing it right when it was sort of on the way out of popularity, which I didn't understand at the time. Right. Um, but I, he let me use one of his old boards. I eventually got to go to Oasis Skate Park, which was near Hotel Circle. That was sort of my introduction to, I guess, more daredevil skating, where I saw people literally flying out of swimming pools. And that was the moment where I said, that's what I want to do. So at 16, um, maybe to your brother's chagrin, you become really the best competitive skateboarder in the world. Yeah, it's, it's strange that it, it sounds fabulous, but really it was such a small scene then that it was kind of like you're the best, you know, Frisbee player at the time. It was kind of like <laughs> this thing that didn't matter to kids my age. So how old were you when you first started skateboarding? Uh, I was about 10. About 10. Yeah. So within a matter of six years, you are you are well on your way to this. Yeah, I was, I was really, I, I was very motivated to get better at it and, and at a cost of my health, honestly. I mean. <laughs> There was a time when I was getting hurt so regularly, mostly because the pads and stuff we had were not of good quality. Adequate but then, um, yeah. but I got I started getting insurance forms in the mail of someone who is at like high risk because I was you know a couple times went to the hospital in Injured an ambulance. Injured so often. Wow. Yeah, and then at one point the doctor pulled me aside to ask if my parents were abusing me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, it was heavy. <laughs> but I mean, and you can understand why, because you were into that, that what was, they call also, vertical. I was very young. Skateboard. I was very fragile. I was like, I, I was a pixie for my age. And um, I was literally wearing elbow pads on my knees because I couldn't find knee pads that fit me properly. Um, and the helmets we had were terrible. And I was trying to learn how to fly out of these 10 foot swimming pools. So. Um, the, the the equation was that of, of danger for the most part. but. To be fair, I, I got through that phase and f kind of figured out how to do it and figured out how to do the aerial stuff and um, and figured out how to do it a little more safer and, and you know not throw caution to the wind so much. And you weren't hesitant when, when your kids decided, hey, I think I wanna I wanna start skateboarding. I know your son, professional skateboarder. Yeah, I wasn't no, not at all. In fact, I feel like the equipment has come a long way, the the facilities have come a long way, that you know, they're they're made much better. Um, and just the knowledge has come so far. I mean, when I started, we, we were just, we didn't know what we were doing. We were creating everything as we went. It was like this empty canvas. And now it's much more established. The tricks are, are more, there's a foundation set of what you should be learning. And, and I didn't have that sort of progression because I didn't have anyone to, to follow. No, in fact, you're, you're responsible for creating a lot of the, the tricks that kids are now trying to learn to accomplish. Yeah, and mostly the kind of ramp tricks, but yeah. yeah. So in 1976, in May, a, a big skate park opens up in Carlsbad. It is a, yeah. one of two in the world at the time, which is pretty cool. And and now do you look back and think, wow, San Diego really was, and I was a part of the, sort of the, the birth of skateboarding and its popularity now? Yeah, I think, San, I, well, Southern California in general, but definitely there was a strong scene in San Diego. In fact, some of the, you know, my hometown heroes were some of the top pros. But I never got to skate Carlsbad. Um, it closed before I really got into it. We tried to go there after it closed, with, literally with my dad, drove me and my friend there, and uh, this guy came out who was the security guard for the place with a rock salt shotgun and aimed it at us. We're like, all right, I guess we're not gonna get that. We're not gonna hop this fence. Um, but uh, the other significant parks were Spring Valley and, um, and Oasis was, and then eventually Del Mar Skate Ranch was the only one that remained. And that's, I got lucky that my parents moved to North County when I was in high school and it just happened to be near Del Mar Skate Ranch. It was all very, um, it, 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 <laughs> I, I, I'd like to say that it was their intention, but it wasn't at all. It was all very lucky. 
but obviously they had to support what what you were doing and knew that you were onto something at that point. Yeah, it wasn't like I was making a living at the time though, mm -hmm. so that wasn't the intent. The intent for them was just real estate. They wanted to sell their house in Tierra Santa, they bought an apartment in, in Cardiff, and then eventually a house in Carlsbad. So I was bouncing around through high school. But this was really something that you had to know pretty early on that you wanted to stick with. I wanted to stick with it for sure, and I was at an age where I didn't think I was choosing a career at the time. I was. You know, when I turned pro, I was 14 years old. I was getting royalty checks for $5. So it didn't feel like <laughs> I was choosing this career path. Right. And, and, and luckily, I was at an age that I was more naive and I, and I didn't have to think that way. You know, I wasn't providing for family or anything. I was still in high school. Um, it wasn't until when I started to reach my senior year when I started actually making significant money. And I, was, um, I bought a house during my senior year of high school. And then that's when I realized I had this career and that it sort of fell into my lap and that that's what I want to pursue. How do you think the evolution of the skateboard itself really changed the sport? Because you mentioned that dip in popularity that skateboarding suffered kind of in the 70s and then there was this innovation uh, thanks to a local company in San Diego as to, to the wheels and the board itself. Do you think that helped change the sport? I think it helped definitely in the early years, like the, the early 80s with urethane and with the wood manufacturing and, and you know just the contours, the concave and kick turn and kicktails and stuff like that. But I think that uh, it hasn't changed a whole lot with, with the exception of shapes since then, which is surprising. Right. Um, but it definitely helped the, the equipment, the skateboard equipment and the pads helped the progression of the sport in the early 80s. Um, and it, the irony is that it's when it was taking a dip in popularity, but it was when it was going through the most evolution of tricks. And that's when we learned all of those more iconic moves, like McTwists and spinning and aerials and, and flipping the board and stuff like that at a time when the general public just wasn't watching. Yeah. So I have to ask you about a moment that if at the time you are quoted everywhere saying that it was like the best day of your life when you landed that 900. Oh yeah, I'd like to clarify <laughs> that as the best day of my career. Like then. <laughs> yeah, the best day of my career Good for point. sure. But, um, best day of my life is, is more involved with my kids. Right. <laughs> but that was a pivotal moment for you. Uh, and then later going to, uh, what was it on, on YouTube, uh, you said, okay, I've done, this is going to be my last 900. Oh, yeah. Was it really? Uh, well, never say never. I said, it felt like my last <laughs> of the time. It took me much longer. That was, that was two years ago. It took me much longer to make that one than I anticipated and I took some pretty heavy falls that I wasn't prepared for, and so when I finally did it, it felt like, okay, that's it, I gotta let it go. Um, but every once in a while, I'll be out here and I'll start, start feeling loose, and it's like, oh, maybe I could do it again. Um, if the moment's right, it could happen again. Okay. But I, I, I don't, I never plan that trick, especially because it takes so much out of me that it has to happen more organically. So you have gone on to create a foundation that is now working to create a place for other young, inspiring skateboarders, people who are just looking to, to get out there and skateboard in a safe manner. Uh, you had mentioned that you really got a lot of people reaching out to you and saying, hey, there's no place for us to, to skate. And now, thanks in part to the foundation, the Tony Hawk Foundation, uh, there the skateboarding parks are a plenty, especially here in San Diego. Yeah, it really, for me, it was a reaction to uh, the popularity of skating. We started the foundation in 2002, and it was a reaction to how popular skating was and the lack of facilities that were, that were there. And the only facilities that were being built at the time were being built in more affluent neighborhoods by uh, sidewalk contractors because they got the, the bid for it, and they didn't know how to build a skate park. So it was like this sort of bad cycle that, that the cities were trying to provide for skaters, but really they were building a facility that was worse than what the shopping mall could provide. Um, so I wanted to change that scenario, but also to give the funding to more deserved areas. Um, and so that was the goal. Uh, we try to empower communities that want to get parks going themselves, that have actually done some groundwork in terms of uh, petitioning the city, going to city council meetings, fundraising. And uh, to date, we've been really effective with our money. We've helped to fund over 800 skate parks now. Oh my gosh. Um, across the U.S. Across and, the U.S. Yeah, and giving away over $9 million. That's incredible. So what's next for you? What, what are you working on next? 
Uh, I'm always kind of skating, honestly, at my age. Uh, I, I can I can tell I've that. Found way, well, I've found <laughs> ways to be progressive, even though it's not as like high impact or high risk, uh, but but more technical, and, and that's sort of what has always driven me was, is the, the progression of skating, and it, it continues to evolve. Um, What's next for me? Uh, I'm, I'm doing the uh, commentary at the Vans Park series this year. So I was just in Sao Paulo, literally yesterday. Uh, I'm going to Montreal next week, then to Paris, um, and uh, and just raising kids and, and trying to enjoy the fruits of my labor. <laughs> well, this is definitely a way to enjoy it. So we appreciate you taking the time to yeah, hang coming, out with sure. us this morning and uh, keep skating and keep smiling. And we may see you in a car <laughs> rolling around San Diego asking kids to do ollies again. Oh, maybe? to do kickflips. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I, I don't want to harass skaters too much to do that. <laughs> I, I thought it went well the first time, and uh, so I'll leave it at that. But um, now I get harassed, so the tables have turned. So if they see you in public, they want to yes, kickflip. Yes, very right. much so. That has been happening quite a bit out of car <laughs> windows. Do a kickflip. Tony Hawk, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Appreciate it. Cool, thank you. Coming up on San Diego People, it started as a successful surfboard company, but by the late 1960s, Gordon and Smith became one of the most successful skateboarding companies in the U.S. When we come back, a look back at the company's legacy right here in San Diego, next. When we come back, a look back at the company's legacy right here in San Diego, next. Welcome back to San Diego, people. Although it started as a surfboard company, in the late 60s, Gordon and Smith became an industry leader in making skateboards. And it became quite the leader here in San Diego. Joining us now is Debbie Gordon. Good morning. Good morning. You are the daughter of the late, great Larry Gordon of Gordon and Smith, who really just took on uh, what became such a trend here in San Diego, and I think really a, a birthplace of skateboarding in and of itself. Tell us about the transitioning from, from surfboards into skateboards. It was pretty natural, I guess, at that time, um, all the skaters were surfers, and there was downtime when there wasn't a swell, so of course, you know, they started putting together skateboards and skateboarding to kind of as a cross training for, you know, to keep their their surfing skills up. So that all started here in San Diego with Skip Fry and Mike Hinson. Um, and my, my, my grandfather invented um, a material called bow tough, which was real flexible. And they ended up taking that and laminating it, making skateboards. And um, it, they were a lot like surfboards at the time. So that was when surf and skate kind of crossed over. So you really have the evolution of, of the skateboard, especially as it relates to, to GNS in San Diego. Can you point out yeah. to us really this, I mean, this kind of predating what GNS was doing, that's a skateboard from when, the 1950s? Well, this is just kind of to put it into context, this is the way skateboards were up until 1958. This is the, the first manufactured skateboard. This was uh, 1959 here in San Diego. This one was made Humco. And then this is the first GNS board, which oh, was 1964. And so you'll see this is the very first board that was ever laminated uh, with the composite, that bow tough I was telling you about from the archery industry, which causes uh, you know, a lot of flex and pop, um, just like surfing. And um, these are the boards that actually were the first boards ridden by Skip and Mike Hinson. I've got ads down there showing, <laughs> but they uh, won a second place team trophy at the first skateboard contest up in Anaheim with these skateboards. So what are your memories as a kid watching your dad kind of take on this this new this new wave of, of how to enjoy skate and surf when you're not when the when the waves weren't good, right? Oh, we, <laughs> My brother and I, we skated all the time and really thought that that's how everybody else grew up. I had no idea, but we, we had a great time. We did both and uh, we just spent a lot of time surfing and skating and, and also working in the business. So yeah. we were raised by, by the, the, the industry actually. So you were on a skateboard pretty early, I would imagine. Yeah, at about six. At about six? Yeah. yeah. So as the industry kind of changed, there was a dip in skateboarding. And then as the technology changed, and we can see uh, new trucks were developed, the wheels yes. uh, took on a different form, it really kind of gained in popularity again. Yeah. Big game changer. Uh, completely went out 
in the 60s only to come back in the 70s because of urethane wheels a lot different ride the like you said the technology was a lot better and it, it skateboarding grew phenomenally in the 70s and gns was probably the third largest skateboard company at that time so it was a it was a big deal you know and especially for san diego are right, you, are right you surprised to see how, how the industry has changed? I mean, at one point, I was learning that in, in 1976, the Carlsbad Skate Park was the first of two in the world right yeah, here yeah, yeah. in San Diego. And now, San Diego County, we have over 35 skate parks. Right. Um, I actually skated Carlsbad when I was younger. Wow. And Oasis Skate Park. That was another that one was that was in one. Mission Valley, yeah. So uh, at, there was a time when skate parks went out all together and then they've now come, started to come back. And there's, what, 2,000 skate parks now, I think, or more in San Diego, popping up all over the place, little ones. So. Little ones, well, that's yeah. incredible. And so let's come over here and kind of see what, I, I mean, this is, it's all about what's, what's on your, your deck, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In the 70s, it was pretty, pretty plain. You know, the boards were plain, like the one on the end and, and this one. But then, as you, they started in the 80s to, to actually get more colorful. And uh, so I have some ads that kind of show. I used to airbrush skateboards in the seven, late 70s just to put color on them. That was before graphics. So. And so now, and so now, where is the industry? Where are you? Because you and your brother have carried on your, your father's tradition. Yeah. And you're still making surfboards. Yes, yes. <laughs> People people discover that every day but yeah we're still at it and uh, as a second generation we're, we're running Gordon and Smith and um, we're also doing skateboards next door we have a skate shop with a museum and you can come and see these and and actually more and give us the location of, of skate supply it's the... on Santa Fe 5151 Santa Fe Street suite uh, C and it's in the warehouse uh, that's shared by GNS and Alva believe it or not so Skate Supply, it's spelled with an 8, S-K-8-S-U-P-P-L-Y. <laughs> Debbie Gordon, so much fun, and what a cool industry that, that you've uh, been honored to, to carry on. Yeah, thank you. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Appreciate it. We are going to meet some more of the pro skaters who call San Diego home coming up after the break. So stay with us on San Diego People. We'll be right back with more on the history of skateboarding here in San Diego. Washington Street Skate Park. Uh, skateboarders built this about 20 years ago without any permission, but the city backed it and it's still here. Washington Street Skate Park, where we're at now, is a great example of some people coming together from the community and making something happen that kids can enjoy, adults can enjoy, and it really brings a sense of pride and community to the citizens of San Diego. Sometimes I come here and there's people from Europe or South America, all over the world. So they've seen this in the magazines or on the internet and they come to Washington Street, it's rad. This is kind of like our Notre Dame or something like that. This is a real good example of an open systems design. It's a bottom up design coming from the ground up with that grassroots uh, public organizing. And it's really a one of a kind skate park that we have here in San Diego, California. And I'm very proud to skate here and call myself a local.
Welcome back to San Diego, people. We've had a fun morning discussing the history of skateboarding here in San Diego. What a rich history it is, too. So, of course, we have to talk to some of the pro skaters that call San Diego home. We have Willie Santos, Steve James, Steve Cathy. Thanks, guys, for being here this morning. Hey, thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. So, so Willie, yeah. I'll start with you. You yes. started skating at a, a very early age, and, and uh, you never thought that this was going to be something I read that really provided for your family and, and turned into what it turned into. And look at oh no, it's it's incredible. It's definitely a blessing. I started skating at the at my son's age. That he's right over there, ten years old, and here I am, like a dinosaur. I'm 43 years old, and I still love <laughs> but it. But you death. still skate. Yes, I still skate. <laughs> it keeps you young, It keeps right? me active. Yes. Okay, yeah. so so you know when we talk about San Diego and this this history of skating, I've I've learned so much, and really San Diego is the birthplace for a lot of the the big skaters. I mean, we we've talked to Tony Hawk, and I know you skated on his his team. Yes, of course, yeah. Uh, what do you think about San Diego's role in this in skateboarding becoming what it is today? I mean, I, I believe that like with uh, like Gordon Smith, that they played a big role here in San Diego, yeah. and that in fact was the, the the first company that I turned pro for, and then leading up into uh, to Birdhouse. So you know, GNS is definitely have a rich history here in San Diego. And I know yeah. you, you're, you're working to help uh, develop a, a new park in Mira Mesa? Yes, so yeah, like a couple weeks ago, we just had a meeting and we're, we're designing it and we're submitting the plans, I believe, next week. So it's really ex exciting. Mira Mesa is where I grew up skateboarding and, uh, you know, it's going to uh, make me cry once it's actually open because it's been a long, long time coming. And what's yeah. the fun of being a pro skater if you don't have your own board, right? Well, luckily, um, <laughs> I, I make this board right here, and it has my name on it. So, oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's a Willie's workshop, you know. So, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> So, Steve, you guys are old buddies, go back? Yeah, yeah, what? we have Willie and us go back. I'm definitely from back east and moved out here in 98, and I met Willie. And also, I started the same time when Willie started um, yeah. skating, 10 years old. You know, I'm yeah. still out here doing it. Legs still moving, still good. <laughs> Low impact these days, but it's been awesome. It's been great. It's been awesome. And you've also kind of worked your skateboarding talents and being a pro skater into your graphic artistry, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. With, with toys and getting that next generation involved in... And uh, skating. Yeah, I got a uh, um, uh, Tech Deck brand right here. I'm a brand ambassador and a uh, product uh, product manager on the brand. So, um, you know, I work with a lot of skating, skate, skateboarders in the industry, skate brands in the industry. And um, this is a number one action sports toy brand out on the market right now. And also, um, um, I share these two in the skate ministry at the Rock Church. You know, we go out to skate parks and we give these out to, um, to skaters. Also, I'm sharing with them about, um, you know, God's called us to, uh, you know, to love on our community. And my community is the skate community. So that's what we do. We go out there, we give out free decks, give out free tech decks, free shirts, and it's awesome. You know, just being able to give back. And I learned that from Willie, just right. building a skate park and giving back to the community. So that's my way of being able to give back and be able to share out in the community. That's so awesome. And you had a lot of people to look up to oh, in yeah. San Diego. Steve, Kathy, you, it, this has uh, got to be cool for you to look back and see what skateboarding has become. Because in the 70s, I mean, it was kind of just the cool new thing, right? Well, it, it was. I think um, in the 70s, it was kind of a reflection of the 60s, but it was just uh, going to the next level. Um, it's still even back then, it was kind of a, um, it was just, you know, to, if we went out skating, it was really just kind of a, an appreciation or just trying to emulate what we were doing surfing because really everything kind of started from surfing. Well, that's what I kind of heard is like the, <clears throat> the waves died down and everybody wanted that still, that surfing feel. And so put wheels on a board. Yeah. You got and it. Exactly. And with uh, GNS, um, you know, they've been making the fiber flex even back in the 60s, but then they revamped everything into the 70s. And it was a, um, just, it was a great timeline. The 70s, what I, I like about that time period is we had, um, it went from just doing uh, freestyle tricks and then the, uh, the development and introduction into skateboard parks and pipes and pools and uh, and then it accelerated from there. And just vert skating, which is crazy. Um, so when you when you think back, I mean, do you remember some of those early parks like the the, the Carlsbad skate park? Oh. I mean, were those your those are every day you got out of school and you're headed there? So Lauren, I'm in, I'm impressed that you know about the Carlsbad skate park. <laughs> I'm learning as so I'm you, researching you're reading your history this. Story, books. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Carl. Carlsbad was the very first skate park, uh, first concrete park, and everything kind of went from there. But it, it's it's interesting. We had a time period of about three years that um, uh, everybody skated in skate parks, and there were hundreds of kids on a weekend. Um, and then as it progressed, um, then at one point, actually, insurance uh, parks couldn't keep up with the right. insurance uh, policies, and they literally all died uh, across you know going in, into the early 80s. 
So that kind of brought us into the, the next era uh, of skating. Um, I kind of like to give credit to Tony. That was kind of like the, right. uh, the Tony Hawk era. But, right. um, but, but still, even with, uh, with Tony Hawk and um, uh, local skaters, uh, Billy Ruff and Neil Blender, who lives here in San Diego as well, were some of the top skaters. And we're seeing some of the next generation with Willie's kids. Can you um, give us some education on some of these tricks that they're doing? Because I'm seeing lots of kickflips going on over here. I mean, how do you, how do you, I guess, let's see if Willie does. Okay, so that's an ollie. That's an ollie. So that was, over his daughter and son. Yeah, there you go. There's a lot, lot of confidence <laughs> there. And uh, so, so really, uh, and where, where Willie came into play, so we talked about a little bit the 60s and the 70s and the 80s being Tony Hawk era and then the uh, the 90s really is where Willie came into play. And when I was saying where a lot of the skate parks had died out, yep. um, the whole skateboard industry kind of revamped and it started into street skating. And, and that's Willie, what we get with all these tricks, right? Exactly. Another and, and, ollie over his kids. All right, Steve Cathy, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Steve James, Willie Santos, so much fun. Thanks for joining this edition of San Diego People on the Skateboarding History right here in San Diego. We'll see you next week. Okay.